This is FX market volatility data that's been generated using a proprietary technique we use, and it will allow us to essentially validate our hypothesis a little further. If you remember from earlier on in this conversation, we hypothesized that momentum is likely dependent or related in some way to volatility in the market as momentum driven returns uh, are a result of good movements generally. So in order for us to make sense of the outcome of this monthly, um, monthly periodic backtest here, we're going to go ahead and load the volatility data that we've, as I mentioned, provided to you on GitHub as well. We're going to write some code, which has already been written for you and shared on GitHub, uh, to generate a comparable data set whereby we can take strategy returns and compare them to the volatility data that we provided you to see if there's any correlation between different uh, periodic returns and market volatility. For that, we've written three functions, to gen one to generate the comparable data set, so you can go ahead and calculate the correlation coefficients, uh, another to compare the strategy returns to the market volatility, where you can supply the strategy returns and the volatility, that then goes ahead, creates the comparable data set, and plots the results for you. And finally, for all the tests that we conducted earlier and stored inside our dictionary object called results, we will then write a little function here that will plot all correlations to market volatility of all these tests. And this, this code has already been, already been written for you. To visualize all of this, you essentially execute each of the data sets inside your results dictionary for daily, weekly, and monthly for the periods in question, daily being an empty space, weekly being W, and monthly being M. And this plots the correlations for you of each of those tests. The x-axis of this series is indicative of the number of Darwins in our test. So 0 represents 10, 1 represents 15, so on and so forth. The index should really be changed to multiples of 5, but that's what the x-axis represents. In the case of the daily um, tests, it's observed that there isn't much in the way of positive correlation between returns and FX market volatility on the daily time frame. When producing this for the weekly time frame, it's observed that the range again is between negative 0.06 and 0.02. And even though as we increase the number of Darwins, the correlation to FX market volatility increases, the increase isn't enough for us to, to sustain the theory that there is indeed on the weekly time frame a definitive correlation between asset returns generated through a momentum factor and FX market volatility. However, when we run the same analysis using the monthly tests, comparing them to FX market volatility, there is indeed a decent positive correlation between the results of the monthly periodic tests and the FX market volatility. And this generally shows an uptrend as we increase the number of assets in this momentum portfolio. So what this allows us to see is that even though there's not a, there isn't a very strong correlation, the fact that we have between 0 0.18 and 0 0.22 is the mean of our uh, mean sort of region of correlation. This is definitive in that there is certainly correlation between our monthly periodic strategy returns from this momentum factor and FX market volatility. If we go ahead and plot these, we can see these more in a, we can see these in a clearer light. So here, for example, we have daily returns, uh, strategy, daily, the daily test plotted against FX market volatility. Then we have the weekly test plotted against FX market volatility. In both these cases, the, the correlations aren't enough for us to justify a conclusion that, yes, there is definitely a correlation here for us to give th some thought to. But finally, when we do run it across the monthly momentum factor, there is indeed a decent correlation that allows us to see that, yes, there is a relationship between the movement of this momentum-driven monthly uh, strategy and, month and uh, FX market volatility. And what does that imply? What does that explain about the data that we have? The only, the only conclusion we can draw in this basic trading strategy that we've come up with a completely uh, randomly chosen momentum factor is that if there is a correlation between the returns and looking at the market volatility from that period of January, February, March uh, 2018 downwards, we can see that as volatility has declined, and generally throughout the history of this uh, monthly momentum factor, as volatility has exhibited decline, so have the returns of this monthly momentum factor over time. So in conclusion, what we've done today is 
taken a hypothesis, we've essentially outlined the quant workflow as applied to using the Darwin API, developing a hypothesis, assessing the data requirements, where to get that data from, from the Darwin Info API, uh, then creating the data set itself involving the assets as well as the quotes from that data set, then to constructing the factors required for validating our hypothesis. In this particular case, we chose a momentum factor that uh, our hypothesis stated that we would like to see if there is predictive ability in past returns for a period on future returns of the same period. We then calculated the strategy returns using the factors that we um, hypothesized here. We calculated the factors. We wrote a lot of code to help us generate results from those factors. We also plotted various statistics as well as charts to enable us to visualize how our performance was. We conducted robustly a series of tests across a, a variation of a number of minimum number of Darwins in our daily portfolio. We also included a very conservative transaction cost in order for us to attempt to break this strategy in case it proved to be profitable. In the first two periods of daily and weekly, we received little to no benefit and both strategies lost very, very quickly, uh, leading us to not doing any further analysis on them. In the case of the monthly, when we did see some potential alpha, there were some disturbing aspects of this uh, result set. And these were there is a reliance on possible, there is a possible relationship between this uh, factor and market volatility. Um, which we hypothes hypothesized through our domain knowledge, but we, which we also proved by comparing the results of our monthly momentum factor to market volatility and noticing a decent correlation between the two. What does that imply from a strategy developer's perspective? If we have something like this, where our strategy is vulnerable to a factor in the market, such as market volatility, then we may need to design a strategy that is able to stop trading in such situations or to be a multifaceted trading strategy whereby we can have several components within one trading strategy uh, outdoing the other's underperformance over time. And we'll get to this in future tutorials. So hopefully you've enjoyed what we've covered today. This is essentially a quants approach to generating a trading strategy all the way from hypothesizing what to look for to going ahead and accessing the Darwin API to assess the data requirements, create the data set, generate the necessary factors and returns, and to evaluate the results. This is a bare bones workflow. There's a lot that will be added to this in future tutorials, but um, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, then future tutorials will be containing a lot more depth and we'll cover things such as uh, generating performance fee time series, uh, applying them over custom periods such as quarters from date of inception or date of first trade, so on and so forth. We'll be covering techniques such as portfolio optimization, machine learning to do with alpha research, as well as portfolio optimization and risk management and so on and so forth. So hopefully you've enjoyed this and uh, see you in the next tutorial. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.